Team Rippers, let's get ready to make a bag. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kasaya, this is Saya Swag. And today we have another crossbody. I'm loving the crossbodies lately. This is such a cute design. It's been out for a while. I did want to do it right when I came out and I just always get distracted with so many other things. So I'm finally getting to it. This is the Aurora Triple Zip Crossbody from A Quaint Stitch. The other design that I have done on hers is the Wayfarer Sling. So this is the same designer as that. And she came up with this really cute crossbody. Yay! Okay, I used vinyl from Bodio. I used cotton from Hawthorne Threads. My interfacing on my cotton is a woven interfacing from two minutes to stitch, and I think I like it. It didn't wrinkle, it didn't bubble, it looks really good. Um, I will probably be using hers again. I will link it below in the description. Um, I used Decaville Light out of my seam allowances, Decaville Heavy in the bottom, and all of the hardware is from my website, except the actual zippers are from Lauren Mormino, mormino.com, and that is it. All right, let's go over this adorable bag. So on one side, you have a slip pocket. It's nice and big, fits a large phone, maybe some keys. On the other side, you have two outside pockets. All right, these are really cool outside pockets. And then you have a full closure zipper on the top of the bag, right here. And inside, one side doesn't have anything. You could totally add another slip pocket, a zipper pocket, up to you. I did not. On um, the other side, we have card slots. We got four, is it four? One, two, three, four card slots, a slip pocket behind that, and a slot for a pen or a pencil right there. So really cool on the inside. It's pretty roomy, like to give you an idea, Here's a Maryland wallet. I know most of you have seen the Maryland wallet. That fits in with room to spare. So it's got a little bit of room in there, okay? Um, other features, I, uh, I like that she has a full plain panel option for this bag. You don't have to do these zippers. She does have a pattern piece that's just a full panel. Um, so you could opt for that. For one of these sides if you don't want pockets on both sides and I pretty much follow this pattern word for word there's only one part that I use double-sided tape on these zippers instead of stitching um, other than that I follow the pattern so it should be pretty easy to sew along with me yay <laughs> um, so cute let me know if you guys have any comments questions uh, suggestions, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it. And let's start sewing this cute bag. Okay, let's go over our pieces. I'm using an all outside vinyl. I am doing Decaville light and a woven on all of my cotton pieces and Decaville heavy on the bottom of my base of the bag. So let's go over the pieces. I kind of have some of them clipped with the pattern pieces so I know what's what. Um, these are my pocket back pocket panels. So for those zipper pockets along the outside of the bag. And they are all just woven. And I already have them marked. They all need some markings on the back of these pockets and on the back of some of your exterior pieces. So make sure you pay attention to all of your prep work and all the markings you need to do for the placement of everything. So there are four of these. I have my slip pocket on the exterior. I have my exterior and my lining. This is my center panel piece, and I do have Decaville light out of my seam allowances. This is 
my fabric strap anchor. I'm not sure. Oh, I think I don't need this because I already cut out my strap anchor. So I did that wrong. Ignore that. Um, this is my base. Decaville Heavy out of my seam allowances. My side pieces, they are mirrored for my exterior. Decaville Light out of my seam allowances. My full front panel. This is my front panel. And it has Decaville out of my seam allowance. My back bottom panel. And then my back middle panel and my back top panel, which look pretty much identical. Um, I think they are identical. Yeah, they look identical. I think the only difference is you're marking one of them differently. So I've got my markings on there, my markings on the back. Like I said, a lot of these have prep work where you need to do some marks. So I've already done all of that. I have my inside lining pieces, two of those, just a woven on the back. And I think the woven I am trying this time, I keep trying different ones, is from two minutes to stitch. So I will let you know how I like this interfacing. And this has markings on the back as well, along the top. So pay attention to all of that. And then I have my card slot piece and the other slip pocket piece, I think this is, it's a lining piece. And then for the hardware and stuff, I have my crossbody strap already made. It's just, I've made it a million times on my videos. Normal crossbody strap construction, one inch for me is what I did. Um, I have my connectors and I am doing the vinyl connectors that she has in the pattern. Um, I cut it out to this shape, front and back, whoops. And I stitched around it. So I glued two pieces of vinyl together, cut it out together, stitched around it and did my rivet holes. And what we're gonna do is put our D-ring in there and it is going to be riveted on the sides of our bag like that. You can edge coat if you would like, and that would look nice too. Um, or you can follow the fabric connector instructions. But I'm not going to really show this. It's pretty basic. You can do it. Um, I have three zippers prepped. These are my zippers for the front of the bag. I have vinyl zip zipper tabs on them. Super easy. Again, instructions are great. I'm not going to show this. You can do it. And then my main zipper, I have shown this a million times too. I marked along the top evenly, folded it at a 90 degree angle and stitched that down. And that is my top zipper. I have my nameplate. And I think that's all the hardware that you need for this bag. You need some rivets. We're going to use some rivets for our um, connectors. And I think that's it. All right, let's start sewing up this bag. Okay, I just realized I cut out an extra piece. So in my explanation, I said this was the full front panel. This is an option if you don't want to do the zippers on the front. You can just print out this. And this can be your front panel or omit the slip pocket on the back. And this can be one side of your bag. I do not need this piece because I did the slip pocket on one side and the zippers on the other. So this piece is going to go to the side for another day. You only need this if you're doing a plain panel for the front or the back. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start working on the side with the slip pocket. So I've got my slip pocket pieces here. I'm going to put them right sides together like so and I'm going to sew along this curved top here with a one fourth inch seam allowance very carefully.
All right, I am going to just use my pinking shears right here. This helps with the curve when we turn it right sides out. It'll give that curve a nice shape. If you don't have pinking shears, notch little notches into it, notch little notches, make little notches in it and that will help too. All right, so I am going to turn this and she does have a suggestion for making it look like a faux piping on the top, which you can do. I'm not going to do just because I'm doing an all vinyl bag already. So, but if you want your material from your pocket to show a little bit on the outside, then you would just pop it up just a little bit over. It would look really cute. I'm not going to do that though. I'm just turning mine and then I will top stitch. I'm going to top stitch this edge. And whenever I top stitch, it's done. Top stitch and basting is usually done at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Next, I'm going to put this onto my center panel piece. Make sure that it's the right way. Your center panel piece has a slight curve on the top right here. Okay, so make sure it's going the correct way. And I am going to just baste this along the three sides on my center panel piece. This will also be the piece I'm going to put my name tag right here too. So keep that in mind. So I'm just basting this. After you have that basted on, you want to take your side pieces here. They should be mirrored, right? So they're going to be going different directions. So I'm going to take them and flip and connect them with my center panel piece. And a 3 8 inch seam allowance. 3 8 right yes okay three eighths inch seam allowance and then repeat on this side, make sure you got your piece going the right way. This little curved edge is up at the top here. We are going to flip those and top stitch. I'm going to flip them out like this and I'm going to top stitch right alongside the panels that we just sewed on. And so your seam allowance is going out towards those outside panels.
All right. Awesome. So I am going to go ahead and put my logo right here, I think. And then we will move to the other side of the bag. All right, so let's start constructing the other side of the bag with the zippers. Now this is my first time putting this bag together. So bear with me. I'm trying to just understand the instructions as I go. All right, so we want to center this zipper. So I am going to do some tiny, tiny little snips in my zipper, or you can use a marker of some kind, some kind of marking tool and mark your centers. Okay, and then I'm going to mark my center of this. And mark my center of my pocket lining. This will just help all of it. All right, so this is my back bottom panel. Here's one of my zippers that I've already put my zipper tabs on. I'm going to place it face down. My zipper is going towards the left because I want my bag to open from left to right. All right, and I'm going to, it doesn't say to do this in the pattern, but I'm gonna baste my zipper on first before I add my pocket piece, just because I like it to already be attached so it doesn't move at all as I'm trying to sew it on. All right, so I'm just clipping this along, right side down. Sorry, gotta get my clips out here. All right. And it does end short of this piece. That is correct. You don't want it to go all the way to the end, okay? If it goes all the way end, it's too long and you need to trim your zipper up. I cut my zippers, these two front zippers at 9.25 because I have continuous zipper tape. And then I put my zipper tabs on as she has in the directions, okay? All right, I'm going to baste this on first. You don't have to, but I feel like it helps with the whole construction process. If you're worried about your zipper shifting or moving. especially because it has a slight curve to it. So that may be helpful. And again, make sure your bottom panel is the correct way. There's a top and a bottom, it's not the same. So make sure that's all correct. Okay, so after you have that basted, I'm gonna go ahead and put my pocket panel piece right side down. I'm gonna center it up and clip it on. And then I'm going to sew that on. She says a 3 8 inch. I will try to get as close to a 3 8 inch stitch I can get without changing to my zipper foot. And between, so we have this mark here and this mark here. So we are starting at this mark and ending at this mark. So make sure you pay attention to your prep. This is three fourths of an inch in. This is one inch, no, maybe three fourths of an inch down and one inch long. So these all come into play when you're sewing these pocket pieces together. So I'm gonna start at that three fourths inch mark and end at this one, right? Yes. Again, this is my first time making this back, so uh, I think that is correct. All right, so I'm going to try, uh, I'm actually just gonna do a fourth of an inch. I think it'll be okay.
I'm going to turn that. Actually, these are supposed to be, you're supposed to fold them down right here and right here. So I'm going to get a little bit of tape. I'm just going to get some double sided tape. This probably is going to help your edges look good when the bag is all finished, if they're folded down. Hmm. And that's probably why she didn't have you baste, I'm guessing. Because I basted this, it won't fold down as nicely, but I think it'll be okay. All right. So I just put some double-sided tape along the edges here to fold those down. They just need to be folded down like that on both sides. Again, this will help with how your edges look when we're all done. This one's a bit harder because I basted it right there. Okay, next time I baste my zipper, I'm going to start like more in right here and go to here so it doesn't uh, interfere with this part. And I don't know how important this part is because I've never made this before. But I am trying to just follow all the instructions before I change anything. <laughs> all right. All right, so I have those folded down on both of my ends. I want to flip this pocket to the back. All right, yeah, that's just gonna help with the whole construction, I think, of, um, of this in the end. Okay, so we are going to top stitch along this bottom part, but we're gonna start just a fourth of an inch before this zipper tab and end a fourth of an inch after, okay? We are not top stitching all the way to the ends. So do not top stitch all the way to the ends. Start right before and right after your tabs. Okay. Um, also, we're going to leave our, we're not going to back stitch. We're leaving our tails long because we are going to be stitching from the edge in and we kind of want those to match. It's not the end of the world if you back stitch and you don't want to pull through and tie it. Um, but if you want a really clean stitch line, this is what you do, okay? So I'm not back stitching, I'm just going. And I'll be pulling that through. Oh, come on. My computer just shut down on me. Gotta start it up. Okay, and then I'm not back stitching. I'm just pulling that out and leaving my tails long. And what I'm gonna do is pull this through and tie it off right here in the back. All right. And like I said, it's because we're going to be stitching coming the other way, coming this way and you want those to match and look nice. So you don't have a bunch of back stitches meeting each other. Um, hopefully that makes sense. It will when we do it. All right, I'm just tying these threads off and then we'll go to the next step.
I'm gonna get my back middle panel. Make sure it's the back middle panel. It will have markings on the front right there. Mine are kind of faded now, you can see them. And it will have markings on the back, all right? So it's gonna be going on your bag like this. I'm gonna go ahead and clip my centers because I haven't done that. And then I'm going to baste it along this top zipper. All right. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna flip it over like this. I'm gonna match up my centers. I already have my center on my zipper um, marked. And it does have a slight curve to it. So just go slow and get that curve in there because you definitely want that. All right, there. And we are going to baste this on first and then add our pocket piece. All right, go ahead and baste. Just a minute, I gotta move my zipper out of the way here. And I'm not going to start at the very end of it. I'm going in just a little bit for my basting because we are going to be folding down the edges again like we did before. And if you need to use a tool to keep that curve on that piece, a stiletto tool always works great to hold things in place. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to add my back pocket piece here. Put my center, okay, and line that up. And then we will sew that on and we will stop and start at the markings on the back of this pocket piece here and here again, just like we did on the bottom one. Okay, so this is the back side. This is my front side. And I'm now gonna sew this on. Beginning and ending at those marks.
Move the zipper out of the way if you need to. All right, and then we are going to put tape again along these edges, front and back. Fold them back by a fourth, just like we did on the bottom side of the zipper. Okay, so once those edges are all folded down, um, we are going to, I guess we're not gonna top stitch. Are we gonna top stitch this? Nope, we're not gonna top stitch this. We are bringing the sides of these pockets. So we're gonna flip this up out of the way and we are bringing the sides of these pockets together and matching them these zipper or the lining pocket pieces okay so we're bringing those up and matching them right there okay just like that we flipped the exterior pieces out of the way and we are going to stitch those together. And it is going to cause our pocket to like pop up a bit, which is what we want. We want it to have a little bit of a um, height to it. And it'll, it'll all work out nicely, trust me. We're gonna stitch this pocket along the sides together at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'm assuming it's a 3 8 because it's not mentioned, it doesn't give a seam allowance. So whenever it doesn't actually say a seam allowance, it's usually the one that is mentioned at the beginning of the pattern. So you're gonna have to fold your pieces kind of out of the way here. You don't wanna stitch your exterior pieces. We're just doing the lining pocket. All right. had to kind of go to a fourth inch up at the top. It was hard to get in at that three eighths, but I did it, all right? So repeat on the other side, same thing. And you're going to leave the bottom of this pocket open because I think we pull things through the bottom of this pocket later. So do you see how that kind of pops up there? That's what we want. And that's because we pulled our lining together like that. So that is our first pocket. That looks good, yay! That's our first pocket. We're gonna work on the next one. Okay, before we go on to any other part, we need to connect these sides. In the instructions, she has you stitch this back bottom uh, seam here to your pocket first. But what I am gonna do is I'm just going to use a little bit of tape because basically we just need to hold it in place so we can stitch it all together with this next step. So I'm just gonna put a tiny piece of double-sided tape right here 
and then make sure that, oops, maybe I am if it comes off. And then connect it to my pocket piece here and line them up. All right, so those are lined up. And then this one is going to be pretty much just on top of that. So they're sandwiched, sandwiched in there. And then you could even put one more little piece of tape right there. Hopefully my needle doesn't hate me. I'm just gonna put one more little piece right here on the edge. And the idea is this will all be held in place for this next step. Oh, come on. All right. I'm gonna line that up right there. All right, so those are all enclosed. Next you want to, it might be a little bit difficult, you are going to protect, if you're doing vinyl, you need to get a scrap piece and protect this zipper tab. What we're going to do is stitch from the edge to this last stitch here. We're gonna leave our tails long, pull it through and tie it. And so this looks like it's one continuous stitching instead of a bunch of back stitches right there. So that's the idea behind that. So I'm going to take this and stitch that together. So I did it just a tiny bit different than she has in the pattern but not a ton. I just use double-sided tape, basically. You can backstitch right here, but then go forward. And I'm going to use a folded up piece of vinyl to kind of prop up my foot because it's kind of got to go up a little bit where this zipper tab is. And then I'm going to pull it out. I'm not going to backstitch. Hopefully that is, you understand what I'm doing. So I met up with that other stitch there. I'm going to pull it through to the back and tie it off. So that is what it looks like when it's finished. All right, looks good. All right, so I'm going to repeat on this side. All right. And then after we're done with this side, we'll go to the next step.
Okay, so once this first pocket is done, basically all we're doing is repeating what we just did for the next pocket. So you're going to do the same steps. You're going to take your zipper, make sure it's going to be going in the same direction as your bottom one. And now you're just placing it on this top curved part. You're going to line up your centers. I'm going to baste that on first. I'll add my pocket piece on, and then we will seriously do the same steps that we just did. So just go ahead and repeat. Real quick, I do wanna point out that I did um, the first pocket down here just a little bit wrong. When I tape these edges, you're supposed to fold it all the way down to this line that you made down here. I did not. I just folded it at about a fourth of an inch, maybe more, and just made sure they were all even. And it still worked, so you can do it either way, but I just wanted to add that in there really quick, just so <laughs> you understand, I um, did the directions a little bit wrong. So you're supposed to fold this down to that li line. But it works either way, as I've just demonstrated. So up to you. Okay, so the only difference with the second pocket is we're gonna sew it closed down at the bottom. So we're sewing along the three sides on this pocket.
Okay, there's my front or back panel. I don't know <laughs> if you want this on your front or your back. Um, that is how you do it. That's what the back looks like. So I have my pocket is open on the bottom one here. And I have both front and back done now. So we will head to the lining. All right, so first we're going to work on the card slots. Um, I have the markings all marked out. This is the bottom. This is the top. I make sure and mark that on here. I marked both sides um, with the measurements she gives in the pattern just because it's easier if you have. Sometimes it's easier if the front's marked, sometimes the back. So I did both. Um, so what you're going to do on each of these creases is you're going to fold it wrong sides together starting with the first crease at two and what was that two and three fourths okay and then we're going to iron that and i'm going to take each of these creases to my machine and top stitch them because these are the card slot creases but i'm just ironing them first okay i'm just folding them each over at each crease or each marking make sure they're straight interfacing on this you can do it however you want I forgot to keep it out of my seam allowances so mine will be just a little bulky but it'll be fine because I'm on my industrial but if you're on a domestic make sure that you're keeping whatever interfacing woven or 809 or whatever you like to use for card slots out of your seam allowances and it will help um, the bulkiness of it. Okay, so I'm gonna go and top stitch all of these because they're gonna be going, I think like that, or they're going up like this. I have to read the instructions still. I'm gonna top stitch all of these. Okay, I'm just top stitching all of my creases, all of my folds. All right, so now we're just going to be taking them up and you're going to measure a half of an inch. So this is my bottom here. All right, so I'm just going to use my ruler. You could mark a line that's a half inch and you're just bringing this bottom fold up to that half inch mark right there. So that's your first fold, your first card slot crease there. And then you're gonna do the same with the second one. You're gonna take your ruler from the top edge of the next fold and bring your next one up. So they're all um, spaced out a half of an inch in between each. Oops. And your last one here. It's hard to see it because my Fabric is a patterned fabric. Give me just a second and I will get a better shot of this. All right, and then this last one, you're gonna do an inch. And that is your placement. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So I brought this bottom fold up, half inch, half inch, half inch, one inch. So many different ways to do card slots for reals. Okay.
Now you just want to baste those. I'm going to take this to my iron and just give it a good crease on the back. And then we're gonna baste these along the edges. Okay, when I baste card slots, I like to go from the bottom up on both sides because I feel like when you go um, this way on your machine, it moves those card slots down a little as you go and it can kind of throw them off balance and make them uneven. So I will go bottom up. And I'll do the same on this side. All right, so here are my card slots. I'm going to take this slip pocket piece, lay it long, long, and then my card slot is gonna go on top of one side right there. My card slot is about a fourth of an inch bigger so I'm just going to trim this down just a little bit so they are even all right so I'm gonna flip that right sides together and align those and I'm gonna sew this one side here and I'm guessing a three eighths because it doesn't state that's it. Okay. Sewing it out of three eighths. All right. Oh, I did it on the wrong side. I don't think it matters which side goes first. All right, and then I'm going to top stitch. Okay, so next you wanna take this other side and we're gonna bring it to the other side of the card slot. And I'm gonna sew those two together at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, so I'm gonna flip this so it's card slot side so I can see what I'm doing. Um, you want Three eighths of the card slot backing to be on the to the right of the seam. Okay. So this side is going to be a little bit bigger, and I want about three eighths of a seam right here or showing right there. That's about three eighths. Okay. That's where I want it. So I've kind of flattened it out because we're turning this into a slip pocket with these card slots. All right, that's what that looks like. And that's the back. So I'm gonna sew around or I'm gonna sew my two sides, but I'm going to leave, I guess it doesn't matter if you leave the top or the bottom. I'm gonna leave a hole in the top here as I go around. Okay, and three eighths.
And I'm coming out at a 90 degree angle just so it doesn't rip my material right there. And I'm leaving an opening. And I'm doing the opening within these card slots. It'll just be easier to sew up when you're done if you do that. All right, I'm gonna trim my corners here. I don't want a lot of thick seams. And turn this out. All right, make sure you get your corners poked out really good. Ooh, that's cute. Okay, that's gonna be my card slot and it'll be a slip pocket. I'm going to take this to my iron and give it a really good press with my iron first. Um, and then we will top stitch this opening closed and then we'll attach it to our lining. Okay, I have that pressed out really good. I'm gonna top stitch this shut, my opening that I turned it through. Oh, I see what I did. Okay, so I did the card slot backwards just in the way that I assembled the very first part. The only reason that makes a difference is because this side should already be top stitch. And then when I apply the pocket onto the lining, I would top stitch this down and it would make a pin slot right here. I'm going to go ahead and just go over my stitching that I already have and it'll be fine. But that's why um, doing it the other way, sewing onto the other side first would make a difference. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch this side down right now. just for the looks, it just makes it look nice. Okay, so I have my center marked out. It's hard to see four inches up and I've centered it four inches up from the bottom. And that is where I am going to lay this on right there. And that will center it onto my back. So I'm going to stitch down the sides, the bottom. I'm gonna go up and back down right here and then come back over and up. And that will make a cute little pin slot on this other side. So not the end of the world that I did it the other way, but um, just be aware. All right, here we go. All right, there it is, see? And then all of that comes awfully close to the top of the bag. Maybe that pen's extra long, let's see. 
There we go. All right. Next up. Okay, we're going to assemble the exterior panels real quick. And um, because I am using the vinyl anchors that go in the side seam of the bag with a rivet, I have to make a little gap for that rivet to go through because we don't want to punch a hole into my stitching. Because if we do that, then it weakens my bag and my bag may fall apart. So I'm putting a mark three fourths of an inch down and then a one fourth inch gap right there. And I am going to sew and stop here and skip over that one fourth inch and keep going to put my bag together. I will do that on my exterior and my lining. And the idea is when I go to put on my vinyl anchors for my crossbody strap, there'll be this little hole here for my rivet to go through and I won't have to punch through and damage my stitches. Okay, so that is the idea behind that. So I'm gonna do the same over here, three fourths of an inch down and skip one fourth. Right, is that a fourth? Yeah. All right. So I have those markings and I will do that on my lining as well. So first I'm gonna to put together my exterior pieces. So here are my exterior pieces, okay. And we are just going to sew these together with a three-fourths of an inch, not three-fourths, a three-eighths of an inch seam allowance. to skip over that little hole there. do the same for the other side. All right, so if you want, she suggests putting some double-sided tape right here. Which I suppose we could just to flatten the seam. I'm going to just top stitch or baste along the very edge of my bag this seam shut, or sorry, the seam open. Okay, so I sewed my seam flat up at the very top and put a little piece of double-sided tape. I'm not quite sure why yet for that double-sided tape, but we're gonna find out. Um, and then I will put that aside. 
And then we're gonna work on our lining. Okay, so I wanna make, well, yeah. One inch in on both sides. And I wanna take my zipper. I need to close the edge of my zipper real quick. I didn't sew it closed. Okay, so you're going to take your zipper right side up and we are gonna start at that one inch mark on your lining and we're gonna be basting this zipper onto our lining. And then you're gonna stop sewing it at that one inch mark on this side. Okay, so we're stopping, or starting at the one inch and stopping at the one inch. All right, so I'm just basting. So basting is done at an eighth of an inch. Pull it off to the side there at that one inch mark. All right, go ahead and repeat on the other side. So I always zip up your zipper completely and I turn it over like this on the lining so I know I'm going the right way and doing the right thing on the lining because it will be the opposite. Your zipper will now be closing on this end, if that makes sense. So just make sure that you pay attention to that. And now we'll baste it on this side and then we'll close up the sides and we're going to do the little hole in the sides like we did on the exterior for my rivet to go through for my connectors. All right, I'm just making the markings for my rivet. Three-eighths of an inch. Whoops. 
I need to do it on the other side because I marked on the other side. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. Try this again. You don't have to cut the thread right there. I'm just cutting it so you can see, so I can show you. It's the only reason I'm cutting mine. All right, make sure your zipper is out of the way on this part. You don't wanna sew your zipper in the side seam. Okay. Same thing on this side. Now what? So you want to press your seam open again. I'm just going to give mine a little base stitch right there to keep it closed. Or <laughs> to keep my stitches, my seam open. Sorry, my words are... Not my friend right now. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm just going to flatten my seam. You could also just take it to your iron. Flatten it out. All right. And then another strip of double-sided tape. So next we want to put the two together. Here we go. So I've got my exterior. And I'm going to turn this right side out. Right, and I want to make sure my zipper is closing the same way as my zippers on here, okay? And I'm going to stick my lining inside of my exterior, right sides together. And I'm going to clip all of this together. Make sure your zipper is down and out of the way when you're clipping it all together. All right, now I'm just going to clip it all along the top. Oh, you know what? That double-sided tape, I don't need it. I don't need this double-sided tape because I'm doing, um, I'm doing the vinyl strap connectors and this double-sided tape is for if you're doing the fabric connectors that stick out in between the seams there. So make sure you pay attention to which instructions. Um, yeah, I don't need to do that. 
So the double-sided tape is there if you are doing the connectors down in your seam. I am putting mine through with a rivet, so I do not need this double-sided tape. Again, this is my first time through the pattern. Sorry about that. Usually I catch stuff like that, but I wasn't understanding that. Okay, so I don't need that double-sided tape. All right, so I've got this all clipped. I'm gonna sew around it, and then we'll go from there. And I'm going all the way around. Remember, if you're doing connectors in your actual side seams on the top, you're going to be leaving a gap open, right? Yep. Yeah, these side edges will be left unsewn. You'll fold them in, you'll slip your connectors down and then sew it. Okay, so we're going to turn this through really quick. And top stitch. I'm just going to make sure all of my seams are rolled out. I've got a couple of little threads here. All right, I'm gonna just kind of clip those. Press them all down and I'm going to top stitch. Not sure 
if it's going to be too hard top stitching from the outside or if I need to turn this inside out. So let's see here. Okay, here we go. Let's top stitch this. I think I can do it. All right, if this is, seems too hard, you can always turn the bag inside out and top stitch from the inside rim. But mine's not very stiff and I think it'll be just fine. All right, here we go. I just want to make sure my foot doesn't tear up my vinyl behind this seam. So I'm putting a piece of scrap vinyl behind it right there. Okay. Let's see here. I just need to melt a couple areas of thread there and there, but it looks pretty dang good. All right. So my bag is top stitched. Good, looks good. Okay, so next we need to add the oval bottom to this bag. So you're going to turn it back inside out. All right, so you wanna turn it back. And then we are going to connect the oval bottom to the bag. Okay, so here is my oval bottom. I need to 
do some center marks on it, which I haven't yet. So let me go ahead and do that. Always important. Usually I snip them all before I begin a video. I just forgot. And then it's also important that you know your center markings on this. So obviously we know this one. So I'm going to just hold it here. And this one is already clipped. And this one is not. So I need to clip this center over here. All right. So from there, we're going to put on the bottom. So I'm going to use my big clips for this. Because my vinyl is pretty sticky. Actually, where did my clips go? <laughs> here they are. Oh, my vinyl is slippery. Did I say sticky? I don't know. Ay, ay, ay. So I'm going to use these binder clips because I feel like they um, hold it a little bit better. So I'm just going to start by my centers here and then make your way around. And you can always put some snips into your um, main exterior if you need to along the curves. This one fits super nice. So I don't think I'm going to have to do any clips, but if I did, I would put it in this part right here. All right. I kind of love these binder clips for the bases. They work super good. And then I don't have to have the headache of staples and tearing them out and stabbing my fingers with the staples, <laughs> uh, which happens every time. Is my base so I'm going to sew around my base at I'm guessing it's a 3 8 yep 3 8 inch seam allowance and then we'll go from there
I changed my mind. I'm going to go at it like this and see if that's easier. I think this was the easier way just because of my materials that I was using. It was slipping. The vinyl was slipping the other way and I couldn't see it. So this was the better way to sew it. going to trim this up just a little bit with my pinking shears and then we'll turn it through. Okay, so I did do a second row of stitching right by my first row just in case my stitches wanted to pull a little bit. That kind of gives it that extra support. And then I just kind of use some pinking shears around my curves. So I'm going to turn this bag through my lining here. Just kind of look at your bottom. Oh, it looks good. It looks good. All right. So this is my bag. I like it a lot. It's really cute. So now we have to close up our lining. So what we're going to do is open this bottom pocket, the one we left the hole in, right? We left a hole in this one. And I'm gonna reach in and I'm gonna grab my lining and pull it through this pocket and then we'll close up the lining. Pull your lining through this pocket. That's what I loved about, that's what I love about boxed corner linings because you can leave the whole thing open to pull the bag through and then you can close it up through pockets. Probably my favorite way to close up a bag. All right, so we're going to close this lining and then we're gonna close the pocket and put on our connectors and, oh, sorry, and our zipper end cap and we're done. All right. So just put a couple of clips 
on this lining. There we go. Three eighths of an inch. And then we're going to box those corners. Like that. Make sure you're just matching up those seams there. All right, and sew that closed. Eighths of an inch. Whoops, sawing with my left foot. That's what happens. <laughs> All right, and then your other one. I'm going to trim uh, these box corners down just a little bit as well. Okay. Push that back into your bag. And then we need to close up this pocket. Okay, so we just fold our raw edges under and stitch it up. Okay. Oh my goodness. So cute. So next we need to just put our connectors on. So what we need to do is find that little hole that we left in the side here. And we're going to stick a rivet with our connector through it and rivet it on. Okay. Okay, so I went ahead and practiced on this first one here and my hole was there, it was easy. I put my rivet through it, got my connector on, bam, right? Now, if this was a bigger bag, I would not trust a single rivet to hold my strap. Like I usually like to sew my strap connectors on so because this is a little bag that's the only reason I'm okay with it all right so I just stuck my screwdriver through both sides so I can see where my hole is for this and I'm going to take my connector put my rivet through put it through those holes so I can see 
okay? And then put this other half through of my connector right there. And then put my other part of the rivet on pretty easy. It's not very hard. I would definitely not do this if you don't have a press. If you're just using a hammer and a mallet, I would not, I would not trust the rivet that way. Um, just through experience, I feel like you can't get the same security with a rivet as you can when you have a press. So is that on? Yep. All right. So I'm going to put this on. That's just my opinion, really. Through my experience, do what you want. All right, good and centered. Bam, look at that. That's pretty dang secure. That's not going anywhere. I think we're good on those. All right, so. The last thing to do is add our zipper end right here. All right, so what I like to do is, it kind of splits when I sew it right there, so I have to trim that tiny little piece off or else it doesn't fit the greatest into my um, zipper end cap. You could also just do a cute little zipper tab on this if you don't have an end cap that works too I like to melt you can put glue in this you don't have to sometimes I do sometimes I don't don't I probably should I'm gonna get a little dab of glue Sometimes it's just messy. All right. So I'm going to take this and I fold it in like this. And then I'm going to slip my end cap over that. Push it all the way in. Make sure it's in there good. And then just screw on the back with your little screw. And my little electric screwdriver finally died on me, so I need to get a new one. All right. And just get it all the way down in there. I haven't had to use an actual screwdriver in so long. Uh, that's funny. Almost there. There we go. All done. Front, back. Ta da! It's cute. Okay, we're all done. Here's my Aurora Triple Zip. I absolutely love this bag. It is such a cute size. It's pretty comparable to the Tremont and the Toulage 2.0. I would compare it size-wise to those two. Um, the other thing I love about this bag is you have options. You could do 
just a plain panel on the side if you didn't want the zippers. Um, it would go a little bit quicker if you really needed to pump some crossbodies out for something. Um, I think that's a good option. I really do love the design of this. This is about how it fits. I'm about 5'5", five five, and my crossbody strap was cut the length of the vinyl, which is about 54 inches. That's usually my go-to for my crossbody straps. I still have a little extra room here. Just to give you an idea, somebody else had given me the um, idea of filling this up so you could see what all it would hold. I just wanted to give you an example. Here is a iPhone. That's how big that slip pocket is. It's nice and big, all right? I mean, this would carry all of your essentials. Fabulous. Okay, hopefully this was helpful. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it. And let me know if you guys have any comments, questions, suggestions. All right. I'll see you guys next time.